What's going on YouTube? It's me again, Chess. I know, I know, I know, I know, hold on. I know I've been gone for a very long time and uh, there's been a lot, yo, like to the point that um, I did not want to take a, a video for uh, for this quite some time. I'm gonna tell you guys what been's going on because it's been it's been um uh, it's been rough with this truck. Mainly I'm talking about breakdowns and I was just facing a lot of problems man. You guys have no idea. Um but right now let me tell you guys what I'm gonna do. Uh I'm here right now in Sparks, Nevada. I'm gonna pick up this load in Carson City. Uh it's only 30 miles away from here so it's not too far and then that's gonna deliver in Louisiana on Friday which is on the 4th <clears throat> plenty of enough time to you know deliver this load on time but man oh I know I was gone for I think it was like been more than a month isn't it I think it's been a month so you know I was like yo I gotta update the YouTube man because boy's been gone for oh man unexpected longer period of time so <laughs> all right man so i'm gonna i'm gonna ex try to explain this as much as possible but the truck man it's sitting right now at 910 miles 910 910,000 miles all right so Where's the exit? Look for this. Oh uh, no. I don't think I could exit there. Let me see. Maybe over here. This is kind of weird. You know, sometimes I'd be getting lost at truck stops. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I'll admit that. Um, is it here? No, I was, I was there. They don't have like a clear exit. Maybe it is through the uh, fuel island. I'm not gonna lie to you. Might have been right. Yeah, this is all parking spaces here. Oh man, I guess I just gotta go in there? I'm guessing. I don't see no other way. Oh, that was a big bump. So yeah, I cleaned, the tra uh, cleaned out the tray. Oh, whoa. Looking a little tight over here. Why would you park there, bro? It was probably packed last night. But that's a very sketchy to like park, you know, because that's where the truck turns and everything. Yeah, you boys lost. I was just here. <clears throat> but anyways, man. So the truck been breaking down i was talking about i'm talking about like breakdown after breakdown after breakdown so you tell me if i uh if you'll be in the mood dealing with breakdowns non-stop breakdowns and then you still want to take a video hell no bro like uh-uh i was irritated i was frustrated i was tired like oh man All right, the exit could be here. No right turn. I could be here. This is a weird exit, you guys. Look at this. <laughs> okay, I guess that worked. So long we're out of here. All right, so first breakdown. I'm gonna show you guys a picture right now. Bam, bam, bam. You guys see my, my trailer lights is messed up, right? At first, I had turning signals, I had brake light, okay? 
And then so I was like, okay, I'm just missing my clearance light on top and um, my running lights, two of my running lights on the bottom. So I told my boss that. And so he was like, all right, let's go to TA. Let's get that fixed. So I went to TA, took me or took them six hours working on the truck i'm talking six hours man i'm not i'm not like sugarcoating it or um trying to be exaggerating it but they took six hours to like you know trying to figure out trying to diagnose like where the problem is going they couldn't figure it out you know they tested all the fuse um i got my sam chassis recently replaced as well so we know it's not even the sam chassis because that's brand new and that's pretty much like the brain of like the electrical components of this truck <clears throat> oh no not good here <sighs> so yeah it's not the sam chassis took six hours and then i i think i waited like a couple hours before they even called me in you know how ta shop is if you guys know how you know going to a shop at these truck stops they can't like most of the time they can't get you right away you know there's like about four to five hours wait like right now man i stopped at this ta to shut down last night you know i wanted to get my oil change i got here uh 6 p.m in the afternoon and right now it's already like about 7 a.m in the morning and these guys they haven't even called me so you know i was like you know what i'm gonna bail out um i can't do this you know i have a, i have a load that I'm picking up today so I'm just gonna do my old change most likely tonight. So be aware of that if you're on or off or like you know you you have to take care of like the uh, the maintenance on yourself. If you're working for a company like I am, you know I still have to like deal with this kind of like BS man on the side. You know, it's like wasting my time, um, ruining my sleep. It's just dude, it's just so much to think about, bro. When when the truck breaks down on you or when you need something work on the on the truck you know it's like yeah man it's been tough so all right back to the uh topic of the uh, trailer long story short they didn't fix it so your boy was running like that very risky oh i forgot to say so they touched the trailer they touched everything right <laughs> oh man you guys not gonna believe it. i'm gonna show you guys another picture after after they touch the trailer and the tractor bam yo man this thing got worse to the point i only have one light going on on my trailer i was like okay this is it i can't run you know i can't run like this there's no freaking way you know like unless i run during the daytime but it's still risky because i lost my turning signals I think I lost my brake light. So I was, I was like, dude, I was really frustrated at this point. You know, I was like, yo, like we don't even know what the problem is because TA couldn't even figure out what it is. Uh, thanks to them. They also charge us five hours of labor for them breaking more stuff on the trailer. But you know, it is what it is, I guess, because we took their time. But in that kind of case, man, if these mechanics didn't, it didn't fix your truck, and I know they spent time on it, but they made it worse, bro. And the fact that we had to pay five hours of labor, that was straight, like, it was straight robbed, bro. It was straight robbed. It was a waste of time, waste of money. And uh, yeah, as you guys can tell right now, my right turning signal is flashing. Uh, I'm getting click fast. Uh, yeah, fast clicks um but all of them works it's just uh it's just weird it's just clicking pretty fast i don't know why but it works all the way through the trailer the tractor side markers all of it um anyways so i had to run all the time during the sun is out i couldn't run during the night i was you know i was very frustrating doing this way because you know you cannot just run during the daytime there's times that you have to run at night you know like sometimes you have to do a graveyard because depending on the uh the shipper and everything so anyways man uh 
I was in um where was I at? Uh shoot. Oh, I was in Massachusetts. Okay. So I was Ma I was in Massachusetts when this happened. Uh, so I was like far from home, you know, I was like in the opposite side of my house. So <laughs> there was, oh, I gotta be on the left here. I hate exits like this where they just have one lane. They should always have two, you know. It's not good. Hold on guys. Good thing like the people here are, not, are very nice to truckers. If you're in California and you miss your exit, um, I would just say good luck to you because <laughs> most likely they're not even gonna let you in. They don't care bro. Like Californians, they wake up late for work. I think I already talked about this in my channel, but I'm gonna say it again. They wake up late for work and then you know, they blame it on the traffic. Like, come on, bro. You live in California. You should be waking up way ahead because you know it's going to be traffic no matter what time. Well, usually like office hours, like, you know, when people go to work and people going home like around 3, 4, and it'll be like traffic until like 8 p.m. But anyways, man, I was in Massachusetts. Oh, bro. Like, so I was like, you know, frustrated. I was like, I just want to go home at this point. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to deal with it anymore because like i said bro like at first we thought it was a sam chassis so we replaced the sam chassis it wasn't even that well it was kind of because my my dash i'm gonna show you guys another picture on my dash be looking with my sam chassis messed up um yeah it looked like a christmas tree going on bro like all my lights pretty much like lit up so yeah i was in massachusetts luckily you know we were calling a bunch of trailer shops because we know it's not the track uh the tractor because what we did was we had another driver again carry come in and clutch so he met up with me uh we try to switch trailers try to see you know if, if is it is it the tractor or the trailer you know so we we came to a conclusion where he plugged his truck to my trailer and he was having the same problem so <clears throat> same to me i plugged it into his trailer everything worked so we know it was a trailer so bam that's that's out of the way right so big thanks to carrie you're watching this man i don't know if he watches my youtube but that dude is pretty busy he always runs and um he's a hard working dude man i respect that guy so um what do you call it oh let, let, let me let, 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 let me merge here <laughs> oh man let's not hit anybody in the morning that would be the That'd be the worst, you know, starting your day like that. Terrible. But um, yeah, so we came to a conclusion is the trailer. So we called a bunch of trailer shops and um, uh, we got a couple fails and uh, success on some calls. And luckily we found one dude that was willing to work on the trailer and they specialize just the trailer they don't work on any tractor they don't work on any like engine type of stuff like that they mainly on the trailer so i had a good feeling about it because you know if if uh if a place mainly focus on trailer they can definitely figure out what's going on with my trailer you know if no one can figure it out i'm pretty sure they could well i went there it wasn't too far from where i delivered my massachusetts load i think it was about like I would just say 20 miles from that delivery so it wasn't too far so you know i didn't really feel too sketchy like going there um yeah so i went there very nice people um i'm gonna try to see if i can post their information right now i'm gonna just take a screenshot where i went because those people were a1 like they do what they're best of you know like they really do like they said they main um trailers and i believed it and um yeah they fixed it so trailer problems done right no more tractor problems with a christmas tree dash light going on that's done okay so now another breakdown happened after uh, massachusetts
Massachusetts. All right. I think I was on the way. Actually, yeah, I was. I was already on the way here in Nevada. Um, I think I was still in. Yeah, I was in Iowa. Again, I'm on a. Actually, I don't think that guy has a website or anything. I was gonna say I'm gonna shout him out, but. Oh man. I was driving on I-80. Um, and then uh, suddenly I had to brake immediately. Like, immediately, I can't ever say that. Immediately, immediately, something like that. Ba basically, I had to stop so, like pretty quick, right? And it, because you know my, the car right in front of me, kind of just um, car brake on me. So I was like, "Yo, uh, uh, what is going on?" All right, so it was all right. Like it's not like to the point like I had to like super hard brake, but. But I had to use my service brake, let's just say that. And then what I noticed, as soon as I pressed on my service brake, I went down below 60 PSI. I was like, no! I was like, okay, relax, relax. I'm, I was just hoping that um, it will build back up, you know, because that's what the um, air system does. When you use the service brake, you lose some pressure. When you start driving, you should be aiming up. You should be gaining more pressure afterwards. So, drop to 60, I would say like 55, because I started getting like the beep noise. You know, when you're under the 60 mark, you're gonna start getting the beep, more, the, the beep, the beeping noise that your air is uh, uh, low pressure. So, I, I kept driving with the beeping noise, you know, it was really annoying. I kept on driving because I was hoping that it will build back up. After 15 minutes of driving straight, no stop, it was stuck there, bro. I was like, okay, something is wrong, all right? And I didn't want to keep on going because if I had to use another service brake, I'll be down to like 30 PSI. And you know what happens when 30 PSI goes down? your, your uh, parking brake engages, all right? So imagine you're driving, and I don't know where you're in, your, your parking parking brake engage. Uh, yeah, that, that's not good. That's not good, you know, it's scary. You're gonna be drifting and stuff, so. <laughs> so all right, I was like, that's it. All right, I'm gonna pull to the next rust area. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out the truck and see what, what the hell is going on, right? I went to the rust area. Um, I walked around the truck, no leaks. I don't hear nothing, all right? It was like deadly silence. I'm talking about if your truck was like running really good, so. I was walking, no hissing noise. Check the glad hands, check the hoses, nothing. All right, so at first I thought, okay, I might have a uh, a frozen air, air hoses. You know, I thought my my air system got some ice in there because when I took out the glad hands I saw some ice in there I was like yo don't tell me it froze up you know like inside and so I tried pinching like the um, the, the air hoses where the glad hands are oh man it was hard but I think it was just cold you know because I'm gonna tell you this right now that wasn't even the problem so anyways I thought it was frozen right so I told my boss yo man I don't have a anti-eyes or anti-vi's air air brakes it's like a, a liquid or i don't know if it's a liquid or not but you buy this thing in truck stop if your air system kind of froze inside especially like inside the hoses you can buy this thing you spray it in there put your glad bags on uh put your glad back uh, your glad hands back to the uh, trailer and uh, yeah hopefully that fixes the issue but i don't i didn't have it at the time I know I should be getting one of those, but seems like, whoa, just, guys, I'm so sorry for the sun. I know it's, it's gonna be hitting the camera. Here, let me try to move this way. Um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't even the problem. So I had to call roadside either ways, right? Because I, there's no way like I could, I could like personally fix this on myself because I don't even have the tools for it. I don't have the anti brake So like, I can't really test out anything on like what's going on. So. We had to call roadside, well, I had to call roadside. And um, first I called TA because I know that they will come, but it's gonna take long. 
you know I always do that try to call try to call one of these uh, truck stop uh, roadside service because usually they'll tell you oh we're gonna get there seven eight hours so you're gonna have to wait so speaking of eight hours you know like if you have that much time you can reserve that truck stop for your plan B after you call that truck stop you start calling the locals all right so basically being productive instead of just waiting for the TA to come at uh, seven hours unless you want to waste your time and you're just gonna shut down anyways you might as well just wait for the TA but I still recommend you calling the locals because the locals does the best hands down boys hands, hands down I gotta tell you that because I've been dealing with uh, you know a lot of breakdowns so and I feel like I don't even want to deal with the truck stop um, uh, idea because you know I would I would I would definitely put them as plan B not plan A you know I would still reserve them on the back of my head but I would still definitely go with local so I called TA after that they gave me like seven hour uh, wait time so I was like you know uh, I'm not really shocked or you know whatever um, I know they're gonna come like pretty freaking late you know yeah <laughs> sometimes you get unlucky they'll come the next day it'll be like that bro prepare for that kind of stuff like it sucks dealing with breakdowns I'm not gonna lie uh, anyways after I called TA I called the locals luckily uh, my boss found this one dude um, he serviced around Iowa basically all around Iowa but luckily he lives where I literally stopped like I would say like 15 miles away from me so we called the guy <clears throat> And um, he was able to come and it only took him about 15 minutes you guys 15 minutes I guess I was lucky that he wasn't working on any other truck but I'm pretty sure if he was oh my alarm just went off um let me just turn off all my alarm here uh yeah if he was working on the other trucks like any, uh, someone else truck it would probably take him like I would say like two hours not long like TA saying seven hours to eight hours those guys sometimes they're just lazy they don't want to really help you they'll help you when they want to that's all I gotta say so anyways he came by like 15 minutes bro he was already there I was like yo you gotta love this guy right so but the sketchy uh, the sketchy part is he came up to me or he pulled into me with a U-Haul truck yeah I was like okay this is a joke at first I was like okay this is a joke bro where like does this guy even have tools like this guy was pulling on the U-Haul van truck yeah I, is it a truck is a van yeah it's a van it's like you know the the one with two doors on the back it was that so I was like oh no and this guy was young bro it was like he was a youngster it was like he was only 29 but anyways you know don't don't judge by uh by the book because you never know this guy is super experienced and um he gets handy handy and um so you know he was asking me questions what's going on with the truck blah 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 open the hood blah 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 and then um he checked everything my compressor was brand new so it wasn't even the compressor so that was that was like out of the way and um second that he checked he wanted to check the air dryer i was like okay okay like that could be it right and then so he had this um the clamp tool where you can twist the uh air dryer um filter top thingy i don't know what you call that top part but it looks like a filter uh usually located on the front well for this specific truck it's located on the driver's side on the front by the headlight it's like a big filter but anyways he clamped that on like you know try to twist it we opened it guess what we saw you guys get what we saw yes sir that was my problem look at these pictures bro like it was so bad all right I don't even think like they they ever ever serviced the air dryer on this truck man you know my boss was very disappointed because um technically air dryer is kind of like part of your pm service 
if you're if you go to a PM to, to PM your PM your truck to a shop, they're supposed to at least check those air dryers if they're in good condition, bro. If they're not, that filter on the top that we just took out, um, those need to be replaced, bro. Like every, uh, I would say every other PM service that you get it needs to get checked out because. Hey, those things are serious, bro. Look what happened to me. I couldn't even build any pressure and it was built a bunch of chunks. It was like grease, oil, um, you name it, bro. Dirt. I don't know, bro. Like, it was just dirty. It was nasty. Like, this guy was like smelling it too. I was like, yo, uh, this guy is nuts. <laughs> oh, man, you gotta love that dude because he was getting into it. You know, I, I like that. And... You know, he was not wasting no time. He was like, yo, you know, we, we're gonna get this done. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you move, bro. Like, you know, I got you. So for him to like really pull out the air dryer pretty quick, he took it out, the whole thing, bro. So, you know, I'm over here trying to see who has the part. You know, I was calling Freightliner dealership. I was calling local dealership, local uh, um, truck parts. I, I did it all bro I was like and I was so unlucky that um, it was already late it was around like 4 30 already majority of the shops are closing at like 5 you know how they are they close early and I was like oh man so I called one shop they said they had 12 of those 12 parts of those but like I said they were gonna close at, uh, at five o'clock there was no way we could have made it um so me and this that, uh, this guy, um, I told him, you know, like, hey man, they're not gonna be open until Monday. The day this happened was Saturday. So, hold on, guys, I need to get water. I was talking a lot. Um, it was Saturday, so they're gonna be open Monday. So I would have to wait until Monday, and I would have to sit out on Sunday, and I would definitely be late on the load that I was uh, holding, right? So he left, uh, he took the part, he said that um, he could try to clean it out, you know, um, like pressure wash it with the water. But I really didn't have a good feeling about that. But he said he was gonna try because you know, like what if that works, then I can roll out mon uh, Sunday morning and that would be great. But anyways, he left, I was in the sleeper. I was like, you know what? why not call ta and maybe they'll have the part ding ding you know it was like a light bulb in my head i was like okay i called ta oh my god dude aren't i the luckiest person i think i was bro like at least during that time i felt pretty lucky um <laughs> majority of the time i don't really feel luck like that you know i don't really get much luck when it comes to like facing um uh, what do you call it problems when it comes to like you know life problems or like work problems I get very unlucky I, I kind of noticed that but that day I was blessed I was blessed yo you know so I called TA they had one of that part one I'm talking about one bro so I, I was like oh yo so the lady I was spe uh, speaking to she was like, do you want me to hold the part for you? So, you, you know, you can come by um, within a couple hours. I'll hold it for you. But after that, you know, I'll have to take out the hold. I was like, yes, please hold it for me. So I called the uh, the road si uh, roadside service guy. His name is Zach, by the way. So I'll never forget his name because he was, he was the guy, bro. Like, he was the dude that will get into the truck and fix it right away like you know he's not he's not gonna waste time on you he ain't gonna waste your time i called him hey bro look uh ta said they have one part um you know maybe we can go ahead and get it and i was like yeah you know he didn't even try to turn me down by saying yeah nah bro it's late um you're gonna have to wait until tomorrow you know he was the dude that you would call him in the midnight and he will still come to you that kind of guy tell me you would not like that um that kind of service you know that customer service bro like it was a one i called him he went right back to me 
we rode to ta it was 30 miles out it was kind of far bro like you know at least for him well honestly it wasn't too bad but 30 miles out 30 miles back so that's 60 miles so you know as a um as a thank you i guess you know at least uh we just paid for his fuel we gave him like 20 dollars he went he, we went to go ahead and stop at a uh fuel stop um for regular cars and we put $20 on his U-Haul uh, truck. <laughs> so we went back to the truck. Yo, he installed this thing so quick. You would be so impressed. All right, so after that though, everything was good. I was building up air. And um, the first thing I noticed, I started getting this, um, this, the hissing noise, the random hissing noise when you know when you, um, when the condensation builds up on your air dryer it's supposed to release all that condent uh, condensation or like the air pressure so it doesn't like build up too much water in there so you know before my truck never did that bro so that was such a giveaway but for me as a for me as like you know i never experienced that kind of stuff i now i know you know like now i know if your truck doesn't hiss like randomly you know like i don't know if you guys have noticed if you're a truck driver you're driving i don't know where your truck goes psh, like that noise it's a good sign that you have a good air system going on because all that air is flowing and your air dryer is doing the great job to like you know trying to take out all the condensation but if your truck does not do that you might want to check out your uh, air dryer man i'm telling you check your air dryer before it's too late but like you know what if you get stranded at a uh um uh, a back road there's no signal what are you gonna do so those things are gems bro like they're important they're important like as much as like i'm already like trying to you know stress this enough i cannot stress this enough how important it is because you don't want to be like me you know I got lucky, I got, uh, I was stopped at an I-80, so it was an interstate, I had a good signal on that rest area, but imagine, you know, like, I would, if I was in a back road, I have no signal, that would be so bad, and majority of the, like, places, you'd have, like, you'll have a trouble finding a good mechanic around there, so, just keep that in mind, you guys, like, be on top of everything, um, I couldn't really like <laughs> I, I can't really like blame myself for it because me not knowing as much of like the truck parts you know like if I know how everything works I know the truck's supposed to hiss once in a while you know like my swift truck did that you know and then when I got this truck I think it was hissing I think it was still hissing by the time I got this truck but then I don't think it was like that loud it's supposed to be super loud right like it was like psh. that means you have a super good one if it's like kind of quiet like I, psh, then like your air dryer might be going bad so you might want to check that out but like i said man like i feel like i learned along the way you know you can't really like blame me for not like because if you look at the air dryer itself it's not something you can pre-trip you know like you're not really gonna open that thing just to check if you have a good air dryer unless like you know you have the big ass not the, i'm not gonna say the bad word but <laughs> i was gonna say a bad word but if you have a big clamp to like to lock it and then twist it then go ahead and i mean pre-trip it but <laughs> i'm not gonna do that bro like that's not part of like a pre, like a regular pre-trip so it's just something that that gets worn out and the shop when you get a PM service, the shop needs to um, evaluate what the condition of that of that air dryer. That's all I gotta say. You don't have to do it, but let the shop do it at least. You know. Oh man, cold water in the morning. You cannot get wrong. Cannot go wrong. But we are almost. That was a long story, you guys. I'm so sorry if I kind of bore you. But if you guys are wondering why i have not been making videos that is why i've been so stressed i've been kind of tired 
I was like over it, man. I, I got to the point where, you know, I told my boss, hey, man, um, I feel like quitting. I straight up told him. I, I straight up told him, bro. I'm not even kidding. I, I got to the point I was like done with trucking. And that's probably why I kind of like stopped making videos. I was like, you know what? Um, at the time, I was like, yo, this is not working out. This ain't working out. All right, straight up, you know. I think um, that's part of trucking, you know, just expect that. A lot of people would definitely quit um, for those days that he, nothing was going, nothing is going right. When nothing's going right, it's terrible. Like, oh man, it's just a nightmare, man. Like, nothing is working out. You, you can't find good mechanics. You, nothing can fix your truck. Nobody knows what's going on with your truck. Like. Imagine you in that kind of situation. You got a load on you. You're far away from home. It's like, oh man, it's, it's, it's frustrating, bro. Like, I get it. I get it. Like, you know, why, why people want to quit and why people don't really want to do OTR. This is why. And I'm experiencing it. And you got to be tough, bro. Like, you, uh, I'm telling you, when you get one to be tough, you got to be tough. When I got stuck to the snow, had to be tough you know i was like feeling like hard oh, it's just bad man like trucking it's you can make some serious money out here but the giveaway is uh it's a lot of sacrifice there's a lot of uh motivation and commitment that you need to put on you know to get that kind of money it's not just you hop on the truck you get your cdl you get the truck, you know, you get your truck, you drive, deliver that load, you pick up a load. Nah, it's not always rainbow out here, bro. It's, you gotta deal with a lot of stuff. And um, I really don't blame people for, for going local, man. I'm not gonna lie, like, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, man, like, but I don't know. I just, trucking for me, it's, uh, I don't really see it as my, uh, my future career you know let's just say that it's definitely just a, uh, a temporary job for me where um, I just need to save up what I need to save up for my actual goals in life other than that I just don't see myself being out here for a very long time man oh man I'm so sorry if you guys are getting blind again by the Sun that's just something that I can't do anything about but um we are only four miles away uh dang this uh, this video is gonna be so long you guys um there's so much more to talk about you know i guess no i mean mainly that's about it but you know i'm gonna definitely gonna take you guys um, all the way through for this load i know i've been gone for so long and uh I, I just need to put out a video out there and see uh see what you guys think oh man this trucking is still gonna be worth worth it um you know when it comes to like dealing with problems i guess that um oh what is okay what was that there was like a lint on my uh what do you call it sideburns it was a huge lint and i thought it was my hair i pulled it out i was like <laughs> i got scared there for a little bit man but um it's trucking still for you at 2022 you got to ask that question man if you're gonna go in the industry i mean your safe bet is these mega carriers right nice trucks brand new trucks brand new trailers you're most likely not gonna deal with breakdowns let's let's just let's just be for real i was at swift right ever 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 my truck broke down for that seven months that i was working with them i did not break down um one roadside that i got was a flat tire that's something that you know minimal uh, that's just something that happens in a a regular day of trucking you know you'll get flat tire anytime you know that could happen like in in just a flick of a finger but that truck man never broke down very reliable but the pay is the problem you know i guess that's when it comes to a play you know like okay do you want to drive a truck you want to drive a nice trailer but you don't care about the pay 
just go with a mega carrier. You you care a lot. Uh, you care a lot about your pay. Oh shoot! I'm sorry, guys. I'm like trying to talk to you guys, and then I'm trying to drive. But oh man, I I, I really just it's kind of hard to like multitask. Like I'm not a multitask person. But um, I'm sorry if you if I'm like trying to scare you guys how I drive. But I know what I'm doing. All right, so let's just let's just say that out there. Um, all right. Let, back to the what I was talking about. If you want a nice truck, you don't want to ever, ever deal with a breakdown. I would suggest that, you know, at least, well, you really have to start with a mega carrier anyways, right? To get your experience before these small companies can actually trust you and hire you. Like for this company that I was at, you know, he required to have at least one year. But I was luckily to even like... Um, got got uh, get in and he you know he was really willing to like you know he was really wanted to help me out with my uh look, look, look at this bro they are too nice here like this truck is like oh no never mind it's too late he was gonna let me but um it was too late to go on the left lane look, look they're so nice bro like they're just waiting on the back for me to like completely change lane. Wow, you gotta love Nevada, bro. Well, not all Nevada drivers are like that. It's like random over here. Like I experienced some drivers here in Nevada. They're completely reckless and um, they don't care about truckers. But so man, you'll, you'll find people that care about you. But yeah, I was saying, I was very just lucky to even get in in this company you know i was I, I don't know it just changed how i look into like how i look into a trucking industry you know it changed my perspective but if i never even got hired in this company i think i would have been done well at least i wouldn't be working for somebody i would have just bought my own truck i don't care if i had to take a loan you know i just can't bro like there's no money in like mega carrier i was just making like pro i'm talking about 800 bucks um 900 dollars sometimes i get lucky at a thousand dollars every uh, every week hey, like if you think about it man the, in trucking you're not supposed to make that little bro if you're doing otr you're sacrificing so much you're out for a month you're not seeing your 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 your, your family and friends for a whole month and you're only getting like 800 a week come on bro that i'm telling you is not worth it if you're making 800 bucks 900 dollars and sometimes you get lucky a thousand dollars just get your experience bro and um start calling smaller companies bro like i do not want i i don't like seeing truckers getting paid that little bit even with uh with a one year experience already you can definitely move up and get yourself a better pay better um better environment oh look at this i'm always so fan uh fascinated with like small airplanes because you know i drove one i I, I flew one before and just by looking at them just really just always reminds me of like the day i um i went to the school that i want to go to and they flew me for 30 minutes it was just so amazing but anyways man um if you're getting paid and you think it's low yo just get out bro get your experience call some smaller companies you're better off with uh with other smaller companies they would appreciate you more more than the mega carry would trust me on that trust me i know it's gonna be hard it's not easy to just to like uh find a smaller company but it's how much you want to put on to it you know how much dedicated are you gonna like try to improve your pay while you're doing trucking like for me you know if if i'm out here i just gotta let that guy do if i'm out here i'm spending weeks and weeks on the road it had to be worth it if it's not worth it, it trucking wouldn't i wouldn't even be in trucking bro like I'm not gonna lie to you. I would've just, I wouldn't be here. 
All right, let me just put it on the GPS on my phone just to make sure we're going the right place here because we can't just trust one GPS, right? We gotta put two. We gotta put two, you know, to be 100%. Starting route to 2801 Conestoga Drive. There you go. You gotta keep going straight here. It's a quiet place. But yeah, man, get what you deserve. Don't be, uh, don't be listening to these other truck drivers. Um, a lot of them, they would say, Uh, bro, get your two years, two years experience, and, um, that's when you want to move up. No, bro, you, you don't want to just, you, there's no such things as waiting time and, um, um, sorry, guys. I'm, like, trying to see which street I need to turn left. It's this one. Yeah, there's no specific timeline where you have to wait one year, two years to able to move up. Look at me, all right? I was, all right, let, uh, I mean, I, I guess I'm not like really uh, counted because I was, 50% uh, of it was luck and 50% of it was like a little bit of experience. That's why I got hired. So, but if it happened to me, I'm pretty sure there's some companies out there would take you in seven months eight months you don't even have to wait a year and your pay would be dramatically different from what you are getting from whatever company you're at right now i'm pretty sure you know in your first year you're working at a mega carrier you know just go with a smaller one bro like keep calling keep calling you got you got to be committed to do what you want to do you can't just say it, like like you can't just really ask people you got to talk to the uh small small company and you personally talk to them all right guys turn is... right okay i see a truck i feel good every time i don't see a truck i always say this um i don't see a truck i i don't feel good about it all right what's this place called stellar snacks stellar snacks over here yeah i see it now where is their shipping office two eight zero one the destination is on your left 2801 conestoga drive arrived i think it's over here i don't think the entrance was over there Oh wait, what? All right, guys. Um, it's definitely back there. So I think I'm gonna have to go on foot and um check in with these guys. I'm gonna try to lower this just for now. I'm not really driving, so just gotta back up. <laughs> So yeah, man, just take my word for it. You don't have to wait that long to better your pay. It's really just how much you really want to work hard to find that company. And then you'd be good. Trust me. All right. We go here. I'm just going to go ahead and check in, you guys, and then I'll be right back. Alright guys, I didn't really check in, but um, the shipping office is deep inside inside, so I'm gonna just go back. I just wanted to make sure, you know, before, before I go inside and then regret it and then I'll have to like, you know, blindside back and stuff like that. I don't want, I don't want that. So if you're not sure if the shipping office is somewhere near that lot, you um your best bet just go outside walk it and then um go inside yourself you know check the place out first i mean i saw the uh the satellite map <laughs> all right i gotta let this guy in good all right good yeah, just go inside, you know, make sure your truck will fit in there. You know, you don't want um, 
a scenario where you'd have to go back to where you're at and there's no way for you to make a u-turn because that would just be bad i'm telling you right now you know experience those days where <laughs> i should have just checked first and then um you know luckily I, I was still able to get out but you just don't want that experience or uh feeling there's car coming gotta go hurry a little bit let him pass Just like that. And we're gonna go where that truck is going. Go ahead, car. You know, they should have have a Lisa sign where it says truck entrance, you know? If there's a truck entrance sign, oh, then you're golden. But if, it, if it's like this, like there's no truck entrance or signs or anything like that you know i was walking right here i was walking and then um i saw the arrow and i walked more and i saw the shipping office somewhere around here so i was like okay their docks is over here on the back see that right there yes sir stellar snacks yeah good thing i didn't make a left there better off here oh wow it's still pretty tight Talk to guy to that guy he said that um i need a po number so i don't have it yet but he said that i could back in to the first door right here and so that's what we're gonna do i have to take it slow because my trailer hit that curve right there it's kind of tight but definitely doable you see that oh calculation right boys Perfect, bro. Easy back. I guess this is like their exit and that's their entrance, but I told the guy that there's a truck right there. I just didn't want to, you know, I feel sketch going on that side. Too many cars. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to have to tell that guy um, to move his truck. <laughs> So I guess like, you know, they always be having that argument. All right, I'm gonna open my doors here and we'll be set. All right. It smells good. Let's see, what do they have over here? I found that this trailer is like messed up right here. What happened? All right. Like just the, like the old times, huh?
Am I in? I think I am. Let me check. Yeah, we're good. Ow! Ow! You ever get, you guys ever pulled your trailer brake? <laughs> Sometimes I hurt you. Oh, oh man. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, pick up this load, and we are gonna head out to Louisiana. It's about 2,100 miles from where I'm at. I have three days to deliver it, so that's easy. That's about 700, 700 miles a day, so pretty easy load. Um, it's not paying that much either. That's the sucks part, just because where I'm at, at Reno, it's not really, the loads was not looking too great. Oh, you know what? I gotta give this PO to the, uh, to the guy, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll check in with you guys. I'm gonna tell you guys more about the load um, after they're done loading me. All right. All right, guys, we are finally done here. It wasn't too long, I don't lie. They were pretty fast. I mean, I was the only truck there, so, you know, I like these places where you're the only one there, you know, and they're, they'll pretty much load you up pretty freaking quick. me sir all right guys so i got some good news for you guys some good news that you guys would want to hear all right so ugh. and this load is light as well it's only a 19,000 pounds so I'm pretty happy about it. Ain't gonna waste a lot of fuel, you know? But anyways, I got good news, man. I kind of forgot where it left though, because I said that um, we were gonna talk about it. You know, when I got to the uh, to, to, to the pickup, I know I was saying something, but I forgot. Oh man. But if I remember, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just mention it, all right? You guys heard that noise, the hissing noise? I'm sure my camera picked that up. That hissing noise right there, was, that's the one I was talking about, about the uh, air dryer. If your truck doesn't do that, then uh, yeah. Just check it out, man. All right, so I got good news. Your boy, finally, finally, filed his taxes. And it's official. I know exactly how much I took home, and I know how much it went on the expenses and taxes. So, all I gotta say is you guys need to stay tuned for that video because I'm planning on doing it. Um, I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. Um, uh, when should I do it? It's not gonna be in this video because this video I just wanna focus on this load and you guys haven't gotten a video where I picked up a load, deliver it, you know, it's been a while, you know, like the usual things. So, you know, we're going to, from Nevada to Louisiana, Louisiana. And yeah, it's gonna be a fun road. I mean, I like going through like Texas and stuff just cause um, it's peaceful and uh, it's pretty quick. You know, unlike going to a, uh, I don't know. What are, what's a place I don't like going to? California, I don't like going to California. New York, I don't like going to New York. Um, Florida, I don't like going there. But like in mid-state, I, li I like it. It's so chill. And look at that, they gave me like three day window to do a 2100 miles. Easy, super easy. Easy money right there. Like, oh, okay, I kind of remember. I think I was talking about I think I was talking about how much um, they're paying for this load. Let me let me let me double check, all right, so I can give you guys a specific number, not like me just guessing. Okay, so it's paying fifty-four hundred. 
for 2100 miles it's not it's not good bro i know i know it's not good it's not good but you know that's the only decent load that we found yesterday other than that i would have to like deadhead somewhere probably far because i'm in reno there's really nothing much around here and um i, I just told my buddy you know what just let, let's just get it okay so let's just be done with it and get it and book it so we just booked it and um yeah i've been in the road now for exactly two weeks well it might be like two weeks and like a couple days and i'm planning on staying a full month because on march 15 i'm going home it might be like march 14 like the monday but i'm probably going to deliver my last load on monday so i'm definitely going to be home for that whole week because it's my my lady's birthday yes sir and um after that i'm gonna be working oh wait something is wrong because um let me turn i'm gonna turn on because before my left turning signal they used to work just fine like not fast clicks but now it's giving me fast clicks oh there you go so every time i turn on my headlight it, it goes back to normal basically that's all i'm saying let me turn off my lights i'm getting fast clicks do you guys know what that could be i don't know and i don't feel like checking because i mean i check if they're all working on all side of trucks it is it's just giving me fast clicks for some reason anyways i'll be going on march 15 for a whole week for my lady's birthday so it's gonna be fun um you know i stayed out for a month so i deserve a one week off um after that i'll be working just for two weeks because my birthday it's at april 5th hi <laughs> yes sir I feel like it's just like last year, you know, um, but I was with like Swift. But you guys gonna, um, uh, you guys gonna hear me talking about my birthday again, I guess, for the second time. So March 5th is my birthday, and April 1st, I'm flying to Hawaii, bro, I'm going to Hawaii. So I'm, I'm so pumped, there's so much going on. Um, after that, I'm going to Vegas for some uh, event, but that's going to be like in May, May 20th. So I'm probably going to be working a lot after Hawaii, which is okay. I'll be okay with that because, you know, I took, pro I'm probably going to be taking a lot of home time. You know, my birthday's home time. That's a week, one week at Hawaii. And then I'll be probably work for a month and something because I have a trip in Vegas. And after that, I'm going to Chicago in um, in June for a wedding. So it's gonna be a busy day or busy year, I mean. And after the wedding, I don't know if you got uh, if I ever. I think I did mention it in this channel. Um, I have to move out this year, find my own apartment because my family my sisters and my mom well my mom actually already moved to vegas she's already in nevada vegas right now las vegas so my sister and all of us are like splitting just you know we're just gonna get our own places and stuff so after the wedding i'll have to take care of that i have to keep like i have to like start looking for apartment I might just get a studio or a one bedroom. You guys are definitely gonna see my vlogs because that's kind of like fun too, I guess. Like to vlog like what kind of apartment I'm gonna end up with. Hopefully it's not too ghetto and then like, you know, at least it's like, hopefully it's like affordable, but not too expensive. You know what I mean? Because yeah, man, most likely I will be starting my pilot school next year. That's how I'm looking my timeline. And uh, yeah, bro, like, I cannot wait. Definitely next year is going to be a busy year, a busy transition, because I'm going to be 
I'm gonna be a little bit sad quitting trucking, you know, because I feel like uh, I kind of been doing this for a little bit of while now. But you know, it's not it's not too much to the point. I stayed for five years. Yeah, it's just getting me fast clicks here. I don't know why. I mean, everything works, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. Just gonna drive about 700 miles today, and then um, 700 miles tomorrow, 700 miles the next day, and I should get there on the third, which is really early because the delivery is at f on the fourth. I'm gonna try to deliver on the third if I could, but doubt it. But yeah, man, be staying out for pretty much a month. I'm not like used to it anymore because with this company, I always go home after two weeks and a half. You know, like right now I'm in Nevada, right? I'm really close to California. If this was like my regular run, I would have just straight went home. Like, I would have just got a load going to California. But, you know, I told my boss now, bro, like, you know what? Like, I'm gonna, I wanna grind for one month and then um, you give me a week off. And, you know, we came to a, to a, a deal. You know, you get, my boss is really like very nice when you tell them like what you wanna do. And um, especially when you tell them in advance, they should not be a problem. He usually like works with me and I love it. He's the best for that, you know, like that's why I like working here. Oh, that's weird. Oh, I don't like the route. We me taking the 95. Well, we're taking the 50 to the 95. And then to the 6. A little bit into the 6 and then back to the 95. Where is this going to? Oh, and then we're going to catch the 40. Uh not really a fan of like back roads in Nevada just because there's so many like like wig like wibble like there's a lot of like turns and stuff on the back roads instead of like interstate like you can tell like it's just dead straight but it's okay whatever you know no biggie this is why I hate back roads it's like it's so inconsistent of speed limit I mean, because, you know, we have these uh, small towns on the back roads. I just don't prefer back roads at all. I mean, it's going to take me long, longer, you know, to, uh, to get to my location. Instead of going on an interstate, it's just so fast. Like running 70 miles an hour, it's perfect. But like right here, like, look at this. Like, it's going to be like always like this. But um, I want to say a quick thank you. Let me check how many subscribers. Because I know I haven't really been checking my YouTube a lot. But last time I checked, I was like, I was really shocked. All right, I have 19,900 19, subscribers. I just want to say a quick thank you to all my new subscribers and for the my og subscribers that have been watching my video since day one um so much love that i've been getting like lately and then you guys are like showing like careness and love and i just really like just want to always say thank you you know once in a while in there like every time i can or like i remember because um without you guys like i don't even know where like like i don't even know really like what i'm really trying to do but I'm just really just trying to uh, share my experience and my, my journey here in trucking. And um, I know sometimes it could be a, it could be a long way for my next video to, to upload or to even me doing. Um, I apologize for that just because you know like trucking could be really busy majority of the majority of the times. And um, yeah, I just uh, I just want to say thank you, man, for like. For, for a lot of you guys being so patient with me and um, just constantly waiting for the next upcoming videos. Um, I really wish I could um, be proactive on my YouTube, but I'm telling you, man, it's tough. Like, especially with a company like this where I handle pretty much the breakdowns 
like finding my own mechanic finding my own shop like my boss is pretty much you know like always try to help but i'm the driver i'm the one with uh, i'm the one that is with the truck and so you know you kind of deal with all the uh the stress and headaches but hopefully you guys do understand you guys understand that um uh perspective of me like you know trying to handle everything and uh me doing youtube is also just difficult at the same time you know but i try my best so and i know some of you guys still appreciate even though like i don't really upload a lot but when i do it's gonna it's gonna get out there you know so you guys can like uh watch it and um hopefully enjoy all right all right you guys just a quick update we are now in um seligman arizona so last night i shut down at loves you know um i did mention that i wanted to get my oil change at the end of the day well i went there and um it was a fail it was another uh another day that um i couldn't get my oil change but this time it was a different reason you know i went there they said yeah we can get you in so your boy waited about like three hours they finally called me in after three hours and um as soon as i pulled into the bay and they were already like you know starting to like set up the truck and everything uh at the loves that i went to it's kind of weird because they had me get out the truck gave them the keys and uh i couldn't stay on the truck majority of the time when i get my pm service i'm able to just stay in the truck and just be on my sleeper you get me but at this one loves like i guess they're being uh pretty strict about their safety regulation so i was waiting on the lobby for about an hour or so right so i don't know what was going on in the truck well, like i'm pretty sure they were just doing you know they were gonna just try to do a pm service that's about it because that's all i needed and next thing you know the mechanic guy came up to me and was like i got bad news for you i was like no dude like when is this gonna be uh over you know <laughs> it's like the little things man that really gets to you when uh in trucking for reals so he told me that they don't even have filters oil filter for my uh my cummins they have oil filter for detroit but not for the cummins and i was like are you serious right now you know maybe next time i'll definitely mention what kind of engine i have um so next time i don't have to wait that full uh wait time because i really felt like i wasted my time just by waiting and then next thing you know they can't even do me a pm service so it was a little bit frustrating but what can i do you know so i just end up like shutting down like um you know i didn't i just didn't even have uh, enough hours anymore to even go to uh, the next truck stop and thinking that it was already late I, i'm just i was just i wasn't gonna get a parking spot for sure so it was a gamble so i just shut down there and now i'm driving in the morning i started at uh looked like 5 30 a.m today so it was still pretty dark i just started the uh the video just now because you know i started seeing the uh sunrise looking all nice and uh it's just beautiful in the morning that is why like i kind of been starting my shifts at this time like five sometimes 5 a.m but majority of the time 5 30 i do my pre-trip and then i start driving around like almost six already so it's beautiful you know you can't you can't really go wrong starting at 5 a.m uh i think it's the best time to start other than that um for the oil change I'll, I'll i'll have to try again today i hate doing pm service right before my shift or in the middle of my shift because i don't know how long i'm gonna be there i don't know how long is the wait time you get me it's like the perfect time is to do it like after your shift so it just doesn't make sense so you know i just made sure my oil level is good you know um other than that it just needs to be on the shop asap but yeah man that was the story of yesterday um i was driving throughout all back roads 
I don't know if you guys been to a what was that again? I think I was on the 95. Yep. I was I started on Reno, Nevada, picked up a load in Carson City, and then from there it was just 95 all the way to the 40. I'm on the 40 now, so we're in the interstate. And man, it really took a while because there was a lot of cars and um that were driving really slow so i had no choice but to be to be behind them you know <clears throat> that's the only bad thing about back roads like if somebody's going slow um you kind of don't have a choice but to like you know just be patient and um eventually you'll get to the interstate there are some back roads uh part of the 95 there's like um two ways for both sides so it kind of got a smoother uh, towards the end where they uh, got closer to Nevada other than that man all actually closer to Arizona oh, my bad so but throughout the uh, Nevada back roads it was it was bad I just don't like the 95 and the fact that I've been always in the 95 when I was with Swift I, I'm just tired of that back road <laughs> you know so yeah that's that that was the story of yesterday there was nothing much that you guys missed out um I just don't like uh, going back roads, man. I don't know. I just don't prefer it. I know some like sometimes we don't have a choice but to go to the back roads because it's a lot faster and um, it just doesn't make sense for you to go around just to um, take the interstate. You might as well just take the back road, bro. You know. But there's sometimes though, like I know I've been like kind of trucking for a while now. Sometimes an extra 30 miles taking an interstate is worth it all right you got to think about having stoplight slow cars and bunch of like small towns on back roads it's so much worth it just go on interstate and like for example um what interstate is that i believe it's the 90 i think it's the 90 in wyoming i don't like taking the 12 i think i think it's a 12 Hold on guys, let me double sure. Alright, Wyoming. Yeah. It's the 90. Uh, yep, it's the 90. And then usually it wants you to take the 212 to catch back on the 90. So basically for that kind of scenario, if you're just gonna go back to the 90 where you're already at the 90. Like sometimes I just rather stay on that um, freeway, you know, instead of exiting fully, like fully stop. And then there's a bunch of stuff like, like it's just not worth it. If you think about it, you know, like for that, for that route that I was talking about the 90 to the 212, I think it's only like about like extra 30 miles. So every time I go there, I try to remember like, all right, don't take the 212 because it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Yeah, but along the way though like <clears throat> when you're like trucking for for a very long quite some time you kind of start learning these uh these roads and um you'll find yourself better at like whatever you prefer the most you know majority of the time there's two ways to go to your destination and sometimes there's only one way you know so but yeah i i, I think it's just a cool fact to point it out there if you're gonna do OTR, even dedicated, a dedicated, you'll definitely master the road, you know? When I was in the West Coast all the time, I pretty much mastered like West Coast, bro. Like, I don't even think I need truck GPS at West Coast. It was that, it was that crazy. Imagine just for straight seven months, you're running on the same like region. Definitely, you know, you, you're definitely gonna memorize it. So. All right, I'm almost to little america get some fuel and uh, we should be good for the rest of the day for the fuel honestly uh i'm probably gonna get i don't know depends on the price honestly especially i'm going to louisiana passing by texas going that side is fuel is just gonna get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper so i don't really want to get a uh, full tank i'm still in arizona so and I'm passing by like gloves and pilot they were like four 
440, which is too, uh, still a lot. So hopefully this was like four dollars. I'll take it. I'm still not gonna. I'm still not gonna get a full tank though. <laughs> it's just not worth it. Exit 198. to think that some of you guys thought that um I don't do trucking anymore or I got fired from my last video <laughs> it was just funny guys I don't think you could ever get fired for something that you didn't have control you know it was an accident you know I got two blown out tires it happens you know you can't get fired I know the tow bill was a lot but that was just out of my league, you know, like it's not something I could have controlled, so. But yeah, still trucking, man, and I'm still here. I was just gone for a very long time because so much, so much stuff been going on. Sometimes I can't even keep up. <laughs> Sinclair, how much is Sinclair? I don't even think they have a truck fuel there. Mobile, they do though. But I can't see diesel prices. What am I doing? It's on the right. Let's see, let's see. Four fifty four. Yo, that's not good. Uh, no choice. I'm gonna just get like death and fuel only. No parking at any time. Okay. At least I got death because I need the. I'm gonna just get a little bit. I'm not gonna get a lot. So let's go ahead and um fuel up. Gloves are dirty, guys. Look at this. I like this because um, it's leather. They just last, bro. Compared to like the regular gloves, I got this from like I don't know. I think gloves are Pilot. These truck stops, the other, the small ones, you usually go depth first before your diesel. This is weird. good here fuel prices man it's insane I only got 300 because I did not like the price bro it's like what is it 454 yeah plus I'm going to Texas anyway so no need for a full tank I also just got $20 of death that's not that's not good man fuel price is going up and these rates ain't even catching up guessing eggs is on the left cold in here 
we got snow going on. Like I mean like that, like, you know, like <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying it's snowing, but it's crazy. Truck centers. Little America Maine. Main, my main, main. Alright. I think by the time I shut down tonight, it's gonna be Texas. I have a feeling it's gonna be Texas. I'll do that later. Uh, 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 I can't see on my right. I pull up a little bit here. There you go. There's so many cars. All right. When it's there's a lot of cars, you don't have to just stick your nose in there and then they all have no choice but to let you in. See? Or else you'll be stuck there all day. There was one time I fuel at this one uh, small fuel stop and then uh, how it, how the location was was like it was just a bit busy street and there was like no way for me to like you know get in there no one was letting me in and then all i had to do was stick my nose little by little to the point like everyone's gonna be like, all right there's gonna be truck passing you know we gotta slow down you know it was like kind of like that so because eventually these cars are gonna have to stop for you anyways they like it or not, you know? Like, 
I guess I kind of like spoiled my body doing it that kind of schedule so doing one month man it's I feel like it's too much even though like at Swift that's all I did you know like I would always have to I had no choice I had to stay out for one month and then I would get four days at home which is a ripoff if you ask me I feel like if a person stays out for a month I feel like they they really deserve at least a week off you know you can't really you can't really argue with that honestly that's why I don't think I could ever go back to working for a a mega carrier where they kind of like forced me to work for one month straight and not going home or if they just give me like four days for one uh, for one month being out like nah uh, I, I can't do that anymore bro at first you know it was like okay I guess but when you start realizing that you don't have to stay that much to make a certain good amount of money then you're gonna be like yeah nah I'm good too you ain't gonna do that bro we're gonna exit here pretty soon so I need to be on my right lane two miles I'm taking the 49 I believe that's a 49 east never been in this uh, I don't really go here a lot on the south area Texas and Louisiana um, I'm always on the north since like the winter because of like you know they're they're giving pretty good rates for running in the snow and stuff so it's kind of nice too though but uh, you know like I've been seeing a lot of snow lately and just getting out of that um scenarios uh it's kind of nice like it's kind of hot though like, <laughs> i don't know man i've been like dealing with a lot of snow so it's like i guess once in a while coming down in the south is it is it, very nice you know you get a break from from the ice getting slippery and all that so I appreciate it even though it's like 80 degrees you know that's really hot for me now because like I said I'm always up north and it's always like you know 10 degrees below 10 you know sometimes negative 4 uh, last time I was here though Texas well I'm not in Texas anymore but Texas last time I was in Texas they got hit by a, a blizzard it, it was like it was snowing but there's their snow is like hard snow it's like um it's like little like hardened ice it's not like where you go to washington or like montana the the snow is very uh it's very thin and um it doesn't really like i don't know I, it's hard to explain but yeah texas were getting like these little cubes of eyes it was like raining of cubes bro like it was weird anyways last time i was there i was a uh, what's uh, i forgot what interstate what is it but i was in the freeway and there was a huge traffic it was like a dead stop traffic right i think it i think it happened for about shoot i would say two hours so you know at first i thought they closed the uh the freeway because of the uh, the snow and all that right but they didn't they just closed it and then um oh wait no I think it was just an accident somebody like I don't know got stuck or something I don't really know because as soon as I got to the front like it was pretty clear so you know it's always like that like majority of the time you're really not gonna find out what's really happening or what's causing the traffic until you get to like front but then like majority of the time they they already cleared it out for you to see but anyways two hour waiting on the freeway 
it was like snowing like eyes like hard eyes and um as soon as the uh, traffic started like kind of moving i got stuck like well i'm not the only one that got stuck majority of the truck the trucks around me they couldn't move um i think it was like multiple trucks that couldn't even move like what happened is when we were sitting and it was super cold it was like i don't know it was like below 10 for sure it was really cold and then um and it, it was so weird for me to think that what texas like you know like knowing like for me i know texas is like being a a hot state like you know majority of the time it's kind of hot in texas and for me to experience that it was like it was kind of weird but i guess it does snow in texas because i remember when i went with my mentor i think we, like you know we would do runs in uh, in texas and it would be snowing sometimes but it wasn't it wasn't something that i uh encountered recently because my tractor brakes or my wheels i don't even know but i think it was my brakes so I, I, I released all my brakes, my tractor in the trailer, and then my trailer was fine. I guess it wasn't frozen, but my tractor, bro, it, it froze. Like I tried to move and one of my axle is just stuck, dude. And I was like, oh man. And I didn't know like you could just like hammer it on the back and um, that would release your, your wheel, you know, so you can move it. I didn't know that, but you know, now I know. Uh, it's just funny because I tried to move the truck but I was kind of like dragging the tire to the point that the tire got messed up because of the uh you know when you drag a tire and it's not spinning um it will just basically ruin the tire like it'll make it flat you know it's like round just imagine the tire getting dragged yeah it was it was bad bro um I had to go to a shop right after it because I had to change the tires because every time I would drive it, it was like super bumpy, you know, like I could feel the difference of like the tire not being fully round. It was like flat, bro. <laughs> like, yo, it was super bad. But good thing it didn't like pop or anything. But yeah, I had to go to a shop and swap those out. Um, I felt like I could have... Uh, I mean, if I knew I could like just hammer it on the back, you know, to like release the eyes. But it seems like everybody like kind of didn't know either because we were like kind of helping each other out, like the uh, like truckers. I was help like, well, I wasn't really helping anybody because you know I was like I had my own problem. So you know, if I fix my own problem and I, if I could help you out, then um, I'll go ahead and do that. But knowing me like i didn't even know <laughs> i didn't even know that i could just hammer the uh the um what do you call it like the actual drum wheel on the back you know just make sure you don't um you don't hammer your brake shoes your brake pads basically because those i heard those things you can just easily crack them but you know just a just a thought out there if you if you, if you get like a frozen brakes just give it a tap and it should release you know like i think it's gonna what's gonna do is uh you're gonna crack the ice and then you um basically the wheel is gonna be free to move you know yeah guys so i'm probably gonna get there um and it's already gonna be dark but you guys will definitely see when i deliver this load because um yeah, I don't really deliver in Louisiana, honestly. But I was checking out the facility. It looks kind of small. Um, could be interesting, you know, never know. I always just get surprises once I get there. Sometimes the side of light map, it's not really going to give you like 100% details of the location. You know, you could, you could kind of just get an idea of how it looks like, but because sometimes I be checking and then once I get there it looks completely different like I was like oh what? it actually looks like this but you know like the uh, the layout is what I'm talking about it's gonna be similar to what you saw on the map 
Look at this van, dude. Is she still on the phone? Oh, look at her, bro. Oh. <laughs> don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that, bro. Guys, if, if you guys saw that, like, don't cut a truck right in front of me. Like, look at her. She's still on the phone. Oh, man. Crazy lady, bro. She didn't care. All right, first of all, why would she go on the left lane, try to pass me, and go right in front of me, even though, like, there's not even a lot of space between me and this truck, Landstar? Man, that's crazy people. Oh, she had to exit. All right. Like I said, like, why did she have to go on the left lane and pass me, you know? It's not like I wasn't going slow anyways. Oh, man, crazy people, bro. That's why you always got to have a dash cam. I have a dash cam right here. If something happens, you know, hopefully I could be safe. Like, I'm not like, going to be in trouble or anything because, you know, I'm going to try to do my best not to, like, hit anybody, of course, you know. But if these people, like, hit me, I'm going to have a proof and um, that should be enough. Like, a dash cam. Dash cam is really going to save your... Uh, save your life and license i guess you know when i left after uh my home time my first day basically let's just say my first week my first week going back to work your boy really had a uh, a gout attack i don't know if you guys don't know what gout attack is gout attack uh, yeah i'm pretty sure i'm saying it right gout um it's basically like um, uh, if my like my left toe, uh, my big toe on my left foot, kind of just swollen up. It's not my like not my right. It's just on my left foot. Um, it was really painful, and um, it kind of sucks because I told my sister and like my mom and and my sister is like a you know she's a registered nurse, so she literally told me you I might have been uh have a gout attack and my mom was like telling me that it's like a forever thing that it's never gonna go away like there's no such thing as you can cure it but you can pre uh, prevent it from happening all right so i was like yo what? what what is this right like i thought like i was a pretty healthy dude like you know i don't really get sick like that so for my mom to tell me that that it's gonna be like forever in my body that supposedly to get a gout attack you must be eating a lot of like shrimp uh red meat um what else did she say um yeah i think majority of it is shell fish well shell seafood Basically, any seafood that has like shell, basically shrimp. I don't know if crabs count, but I, th I do love shrimp and I eat a lot of shrimp, especially uh, when I go home. We usually, my, me and my girl, like go to a uh, kicking crab and stuff. Like it's basically like this Cajun. I don't know if you guys ever been to like boiling crab, like it's like similar to that. All right, so it's like Cajun and then they just put shrimp in there and it's like a sauce it's so good you know i love shrimp i love seafood you cannot ever go wrong with seafood i guess because i'm asian so i love seafood but i don't know it's in my blood anyways my mom said that i can't eat a lot of like shrimp anymore i'm like I, are you really telling me this right now like you know and she also said i can't eat a lot of red meat and i was like okay what is this so i searched it up gout attack you guys can even search it up yourself. Gout. G-O-U-T. And, um... It kind of sucks to really have this. It's kind of like a... I wouldn't really say a disease. Because... It's just the fact that your body is not... Digesting the nuric acid. Because supposedly shrimp and red meat... They have a lot of nuric acid. I don't know if it's nuric acid correct me if i'm wrong guys I, I believe it's nuric acid but basically your, di your 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 digestion system is not digesting all that nuric acid in your body so what happens all that nuric acid kind of like gets stuck in between your joints 
so for mine mine got like it's for a majority of people it gets stuck on their like on their foot like it's all it's pretty much your all right let's just pretend it's my foot this is my big toe where you bend it that's like it gets stuck in between that joint so it was really painful you guys like to the point i didn't even want to move my big toe like the whole time and every time i would walk i would just limp you know and then um i woke up the next day after i got uh, i found out that i do have gout attack that next day it was super bad and i even told my boss that i might need to go home straight up like you know because i was i was looking getting scared because i couldn't really walk properly and um it was just getting worse and worse you know and then i kind of like search it up more about it and supposedly like gout attacks only last you about 12 to 24 like the super painful um phase basically um so basically after 12 to 24 it kind of just like the pain will reduce and reduce as long as you're following the diet so for that whole week i was not eating red meat i was not eating like seafood i made sure i wasn't eating anything of anything of that that can make it more um make it more worse you know so it kind of just sucks if you guys have gout attacks um please let me know down below in the comment because it sucks and i kind of want to talk about it more and, and i i want to hear you guys story if you guys ever been into that kind of situation and um yeah it sucks and supposedly as well um you'll be verping a lot and which i do like i verp for no reason like recently like you know like past this month actually i've been burping for no reason even when i, I don't eat like i don't know where i'll, I'll be burp, like burping so that means you know all that nerve gas is not being digested in your system all right so it sucks um it is what it is when you do get sick and trucking it's kind of scary especially if you're doing otr you're away from home and you're feeling kind of like all right this is kind of scary um what what should i do you know you, you kind of just want to go home from that point and um i really wanted to honestly uh i told my boss like you know what let's wait for another day because you know i was reading articles that you know this thing is not really gonna last until like un like you know uh as long as you're following uh the proper diet uh it should go away so you know i didn't really want to waste time uh because i just got back from home time and i really want i didn't really want to like not make money you know like it's just a waste of time if i go back home i mean i would love to but you know you gotta grind it out bro like you know you gotta yeah you gotta stay focused so you can't i can't i didn't, I didn't really want to let any sickness um avoid me like doing trucking at all like you know if i'm getting like headaches or whatever you know that's something small but if you're having like serious problem if you have like serious problem um i'll definitely check with your doctor first that yeah, sounds like a commercial so check with your doctor first before taking the medicine <laughs> oh man but no for real it's like you should definitely like give it a talk with your doctor if it's like safe and everything because i can't imagine like if you're i don't know bro i don't even want to say anything but if you have like a serious problem like that's kind of scary like i guess like as long as you're taking your medicines and stuff but if i was if i already got scared out of a gout attack imagine if it was like something more more serious than gout attack uh i don't know bro so just be mindful of that it's got um just make sure you are healthy even though you're doing trucking um i think that's the best bet you know like eating a lot of junk foods either is not good imagine like if your cholesterol is way too high if you're like um what do you call it um blood pressure is too high not good either uh, i'm not no expert when it comes to health that's why I didn't, I didn't even want to do a medical field, man. 
<laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not expert on anything of that but you guys know what I mean man just take care of yourself um, especially in trucking like we're not doing anything like but sit down and majority of the time just driving and all that body part that moves is just our hands our head but not even completely bro like majority of the time we're just sitting down so if you got if you get if you could get some exercise that'd be great but for me I just don't find any time at all honestly if I find a time for myself I'd rather sleep that's what I do but uh yeah man just be alert and uh be safe out there decision I'm just gonna stop at the the very last rest area that I can stop um, I was checking right now it's only 83 miles so from that rest area to my delivery uh, my delivery appointment time is not even until 12 p.m. so but you know I always try to deliver early because I would love to get my next load very early as well and then um what do you call it yeah so i'm just gonna stop at a rest area it's not even too far from the delivery and i was thinking because by the time i get there it's already gonna be 8 30 8 30 and then um if i stop at a truck stop at 8 30 for the most part i'm not gonna get a parking spot and i think that's the last thing that i really want to do is um not finding a uh, parking spot because me checking the uh facility on the map it looks very tight uh it looks like uh there's really not a spot where i can uh spend the night at so i'm just gonna do the the safest bet for me is going to rest area you know so that's the plan for tonight I might and I might not take a video of it because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be dark by 8 30 all right guys good morning good morning good morning good morning well we are now on our delivery day today um, it is 6 47 in the morning um, I know it's not gonna be my point's not even until 12 o'clock but like i said you know we are gonna try to deliver this early we're only two hours away from the uh from the facility here and um yeah man so i shut down here at this one rest area very nice very quiet but i was not getting signal not a good signal here last night so that's very unfortunate um you know i just made sure that i had good ass good sleep plus all right guys i'm so sorry my gopro died and uh i forgot to charge my other battery last night so i had to charge both of them at the same time right now and uh, i had to wait until one of them is fully charged and now i'm good but anyways i'm only 24 miles away from the delivery now we are very close um what you gonna call it yeah we should be arriving there right before nine o'clock so that's a that's a pretty good time you know not like like i said you know i'm not really in the rush anyways it's not like it's delivering early uh hopefully they can take me in uh if not uh i think it'll be okay still you know either ways and then right after that I think I'll be heading to pick up my next load already. Um, my next load is picking up at 2 o'clock. So if they can't take me in early, I don't know. I might have a problem with the other load because sometimes they take long to unload you, you know. So you never know. We'll see what, once we get there. I was driving yesterday. It was already dark. And... Um, I don't know it was really dark there was like no light whatsoever it was kind of like this kind of road but you know it was dark man 
I was driving and then um, there was a I don't know what it was I think it was a, a possum or a, a skunk I don't know because it looked kind of like a, I don't know it just looked like a skunk maybe it was like brown right in the middle of the road he was like running around back and forth and then as soon as I got closer to him um, I tried to dodge him because you know I really would hate to kill like an animal especially on the road like I know like that's just something that's gonna happen eventually you know like they, they like you'll see animals just roaming around in the road and um, yesterday I tried to dodge him as soon as I dodge him I got him to the point he was in the middle of my truck so like right in the middle so he um I was able to like put him where I my tires don't hit it or hit him or I don't know bro I don't even know if it's the girl. <laughs> uh, let's just say it all right so I don't know but as soon as I got to like my trailer tires oh bro I don't think he was able to dodge me um I pretty much felt like a bump you know like I was like no I felt so sad like dude I even like kind of prayed to like you know I was like yo I'm so sorry you know like I didn't really mean to like I tried to dodge you but you but you still got in my way man like I guess like he was running around back and forth because he was so confused you know he was kind of lost oh man it was it was really sad like i think that's my second um road kill my first road kill that i ever did was a it was like a bird it was like a big bird bro like i think it was a i don't know it was a white bird i don't know what kind of bird it was anyways he was flying around as soon as i got um i was passing by and this guy just literally just face to face me bro like i hit him on top of my my truck it's like around this side right here i heard like boom and then i looked on my on my uh side mirror he was twitching on the floor i was like no uh, i hate like killing animals like that like it's just so sad but it's something that we can't even do anything you know like I'm not gonna like try to super dot like try to dodge it to the point like it'll be dangerous and kill people you know that's that's worse like I rather just like you know just drive straight and then if uh, if I kill an animal uh, it is what it is uh, you will feel bad I don't know how much you care about animals but they're they're innocent species bro like it's just sad oh man it's, i guess it's just something that i wanted to share because i could I, I don't know i don't know man i i didn't know what to felt yesterday uh, i wanted to stop and check it out but i was like you know it's too dark outside and uh <laughs> and um yeah i was really tired already so i was like yeah I'll, uh, i just felt sorry you know i mean, that's all you could do is just feel sorry for it and um you know maybe pray for that animal and hopefully uh everything goes good you know way station closed i got a green light anyways man the weather here in louisiana louis man, i can't never say I'm, i feel like i'm saying it wrong louisiana right louisiana all right i'm gonna just k i'm gonna just call it louis in hey. two miles take exit 38a to merge onto i-55 south toward new orleans 55 south all right we got it we got it we're almost there uh, but yeah the weather here very nice uh, 60 degrees you can't go wrong with 60s it's not too cold not too hot i woke up in a 40 though uh last night was really hot it was like i think it was 70 right so i had my windows open uh on my sleeper both of them were open i had my fan uh I always have my fan on when it's hot so you know I don't have to idle the truck to save some fuel and um, I was sleeping and then 
about three o'clock and i woke up i was like yo i have to be so bad right and it was so cold it was it was really cold man it was like ah imagine the fan just blowing at you and then it was like it, it wasn't to the point it was cold outside but you know it was cold to the point i had to turn off the fan and i left the windows open and then when i woke up to actually you know start driving it was still pretty cold and i was like yo i gotta you know close the window it was really cold oh man it's just the weather right now is playing man it's like sometimes it's really hot use the right lane to take exit 38a to merge onto i-55 south toward new orleans yeah, sometimes it's hot sometimes it's way too cold like there's just nothing in between especially especially nowadays just uh um global warming going on you know so it's wild man it's take wild. the exit all right 55 south new orleans new orleans new orleans Exit 23 to 51. Ponchatoula. No, pa Ponchatoula. What? What kind of name is that, dude? Ponchatoula. Alright, I don't know, bro. Exit with 23. When you can't say the. Oh. Yo. When you can't say the. Uh, the exit name. 5.5 miles. Take exit 23 onto Southwest Railroad Avenue. Ah, oh, the Siri. I was going to wait for the Siri to, like, say the uh, the word. But she didn't even mention it. <laughs> she probably doesn't even know how to pronounce it either. Ponchatula. I think it's Ponchatula. I'm not going to lie. Look at, look at these guys, bro. Don't, don't do this, bro. Why, why are you breaking me? Dude. I get it, you're gonna exit, but you don't need to break that soon, you know? You're, dude, your your car can stop pretty quick. A truck can't. Oh, man. People just don't get it, how the physics works. And I feel like if you're getting your regular driver license, like your Class C, I feel like it's worth knowing or worth teaching them how the truck physics works, you know, like, they gotta know we can't stop right away, you know, it takes us time before we get to the fully stop in case, so if, when they see a truck, I feel like they should know, or like, oh, there's a truck behind me, you know, I shouldn't stop here, like, you know, stuff like that, I feel like they should be teaching that, uh, before you get your driver license, your class C. All right. Exit 23 should be this one right here. Ponchatula. Hey. I respect those people. I don't know if those are um volunteers. Take the exit. Or they're like community service. I remember I ooh, Slow down, boy. Oh. Slow down, boy. Going too fast. All right, there you go. Um, I remember I had to do a community service. I had to pick up trash. Don't even ask me why. What happened, you know? What did I do? <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you guys. But, uh, yeah, I had to do a community service. Pick up trash. Um, it was cool because we were able to pick, um, what location and stuff. And I picked... Proceed to the route. Wait, wait, what, 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 what are you talking about? What do you mean proceed to the route? I am the same. I am the right route. All right, we good. She's just tripping. Um, I pick. I picked a beach location. In three quarters of a. Sorry, starting again. In three quarters of a mile. All right, Turn Siri. left onto Industrial Parkway. You are tripping today. What is, what's going on with you? You know, I feel like sometimes Apple really just try to break your phone on purpose when it gets older and older what do you guys think i always think that man when your iphone gets like you know a couple years old apple the apple updates it's gonna mess up your phone 
because they want they want they want you to keep buying the new one you know all right industrial parkway make a left 0 0.2 Turner turning signal here. We're going to Pan Food Corporation. Pan Food, yep, right here. 101. Building 101. Yes, sir. In a quarter mile, turn left. Cool little place here, it looks peaceful. I told you guys, it didn't seem like I could have parked somewhere, you know? Actually, maybe I could have, but oh well. Um, all right, 101, where, where are you? Food, Pan Food Corp. This is Gold Star Foods. Turn left, then arrive at your destination. Oh, you know what? I think it's this one right here. Oh, wait. Yeah. But it says pawn. The one on my delivery information says pan. Maybe my dispatch messed up with the lame. All right, guys. Go ahead and check in with these people. Turn right, then the destination is on your left. I don't want to block these trucks, but it seems like no one's really gonna leave right now. Um, I'm just gonna stay right here and um, grab my BOL here. Uh, fuel receipt, fuel receipt. Oh man. Uh, all right, bill of lading. Oh, it's pawn. All right, they messed up on my on the uh, information on the phone. Let's go ahead and check in, you guys. I'm gonna take you guys with me. Hi there. Hey man. Got a delivery? What you got? Uh, pretzels, I believe. Yeah, sir. We'll put you in door number two, right? Number here. two. All right. Slide your candles back. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right, boys. You heard the man going number two. And I noticed something on the truck. My driver's side. Blinkers are not working. I have my hazard on right now. We'll see. Before I used to cut this, but I learned that you can just yank it. Or not? What? Yeah, you can just yank it. Before I used to cut it, dude. Oh man, what? This trailer door, man.
trailer door is really old, man. I think it's so uneven, like on this side right here. That's why the door was stuck. And they want me to slide my tandems as well. So you're gonna have to do that too. But I usually do that. Oh! There's a chalk on the way. You gotta make sure everything is clear, you know, before you're back in. Oh, this is just straight back. I didn't know this gate was open. Well, that's a easy back for you guys. Oh, what? And your boy can hit <laughs> straight back this or what? All right, there you go. I'll make it a little bit complicated for you guys. Still though, not really complicated. <laughs> Still a straight back. Oh man. Make sure we're in the line. Go ahead and slide our tandems. Back it up. Just like that. Good. I'm gonna chalk the wheels because uh seems like they want me to Hey bud, yeah. you gotta pull up just about that far. A little bit alright. Slow down, yeah, a little bit. Gotcha. You know what? Since I'm pulling up.
he's not really gonna tell me anything right now. I think we're okay. Alrighty, guys. Once again, it's your boy Chess. We are now finally up my delivery location. If you guys made it this far, man, if you guys always watch my videos throughout, I know they're long, but you know, that's my mainly purpose is uh, to take you guys with me through pickup to delivery. And uh, if you guys enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you're new to my channel, this is what I do, man. This is uh, basically my just everyday live living as a truck driver. So um, I just want to quick thanks again for you guys uh, showing love to my channel 24 seven. You know, you guys always like trying to wait for the next video, you know, so <laughs> enough with the talking. Um, after this video though, most likely gonna be doing my update on my pay uh, when it comes to this company. I know I only did one pay video and um, you guys really did like that one when I was with Swift, but this time I'll be doing my uh, pay, I'll be doing gross, net, uh, how much I paid for taxes uh, last year and all that you know my expenses i'll be talking everything so stay tuned for that uh it's most likely going to be the next video after this one so and i'll see you guys on that video all right as always peace in the dark, in the darkness.